for us or many for you to learn and master Tika. So, is it your first visit here in Nepal? No, it's my fourth visit and uh, it's my second time for lecturing, but the other times has been with the studies of the IT industry and also some conference in Kathmandu. What's your purpose of visit for this time? This time it's mainly the lectures that I have at Kathmandu University in evidence-based software cost estimation, but also to visit some of the companies in Kathmandu, the IT companies. So, I've heard that you are the very pioneer for starting the evidence -based. Can you give some more information regarding yeah, it's uh, very much inspired by what has happened in medicine. That they went from being more um, opinion based and more um, anecdote based to based on scientific studies and systematic collection of experience. And we think, and we thought then, it was together with Tore uh, Dib and Barbara Kitchener, and we. We thought and still think it's a very good idea to move the IT industry from being very opinion based, from very fashion based, and even myth based, to based on that changes in the processes and use of methods and use of uh, models should be based on collection of evidence, whether it works or not, rather than some uh, gurus or book authors that claims that it works. So, it's very much based on the, using the idea of science as it's implemented in, for example, medicine in our field of software development. Mm -hmm. So, is it very much like, uh, in your opinion, how many people are like, following this method in software? Well, in a way, it's not either or. It could be that some people are um, following parts of it. But in, in, in general, if you look at the big, big changes that has been in the software development community the later years, like the move from rational unified process to Agile and to Lean and to Kanban and all these other things, that has not been evidence-based. That is, does not say that it's not a good idea, but uh, it's not been, been evaluated which parts of these Agile, for example, is useful, which are not. So I would say that most of the software industry is not evidence-based. So, according to you, still, we should go. So, how should we proceed for, like, go from right now, current situation to the more evidence-based? Well, uh, of course, one element, which is the, one of the reasons why I'm here now, is to educate the people that will be the next generation of uh, developers of IT professionals. But uh, it's, of course, also to try to impact the IT industry uh, and participate on conferences uh, where they are to uh, distribute your, to spread your results and to make people more aware of the benefits of being more evidence-based. Because if you're not evidence-based, you is in the risk or you will actually most of the time spend much effort on the changing to things that have not been proven efficient. And that's a high risk of doing something that costs money but doesn't really help you. Do you say same for the like, estimation, estimating the related parts also? Like, should we? Yeah, uh, and I think that uh, the estimation methods that are currently becoming more uh, more popular, like uh, agile estimation in with using. Uh, Planning poker, for example, it's a good illustration. There are many good ideas there. Actually, it's in general a good idea, but there are some elements that are not as evidence-based as the other. And um, I think that if these methods have been more aware of the knowledge that we have about effort estimation, what works and what is not working, then. Agile estimation could have been even more efficient. So, regarding estimation, you started working related with the model. Right? So what, what's your view? Like how? Well, um, that's one of the uh, the uh, parts where I think evidence is very useful to collect. Uh, 
And I, I personally, when I worked in the IT industry, I worked very much with models, function point models and all of those sort of other models. But, uh, and it, it's not a bad idea, but it costs a lot. And then I made an effort to show what is the evidence, when and how often are the models better than the experts and, and the opposite. And then I noticed that the studies, they show, the evidence show that the models are not usually good enough. I mean, the experts are on average better than the uh, models. That is both the evidence shows us in spite of research, in spite of sales of uh, models for uh, 40 years almost, then still the experts are more accurate. And that's, that's what the evidence uh, tells us. So that was the starting point of why I started to focus my research on uh, how do we make expert estimation better, because that seems to be more promising than how do we make models better because now we have tried to make models better for so many years without really succeeding so but hardly anybody have tried to how do we structure the expert estimation with checklist with, 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 with templates with use of experience with the selection of the best expert and that is how I'm my focus changed from models to more how do we support the expert in their expert uh, based uh, estimation work. So, so some people still think that expert judgment is not um, like based on some scientific. So what, what do you say? Is, is it scientific? Or like, um, just, um, so what's your opinion? Yeah. Uh, expert estimation is as scientific as usual. And uh, the thought that models are very sort of um, scientific is also not very correct because the models take input expert judgment. So they are also very much based on expertise. I mean, you, yeah, you cannot use a model without expert judgment as input. So it's not the, that big, big difference. Uh, it's mainly based on what, how do you quantify the effort, what is based on your expertise or a model based on historical data. And as I mentioned, um, in, it's very seldom that the models are better than at least a good expert. So what kind of experience that you have gained during your research and the knowledge and capability regarding this model and expert judgment? Well, the, the experience is that hardly anybody used the, the models that have been done research on for ages, and there are hundreds of models, and hardly anybody used them. And my experience is also that when they use models, they don't use them correctly. So that might also be a reason for the models not being very, uh, very accurate. It's usually very complex to use them correctly. And so then I also see that when people use models, it's actually expert judgment in disguise. They use models to fit their expertise, their, what they feel is right as an expert. So then it's sort of misuse again of the models. So again from my industrial experience, it's very hard to develop good models and use them correctly. That requires a lot of maturity from the, the software companies. And not many companies have this expertise these days. So you mean now the export judgment is more increasing or the origin company? Or? It's increasing, yes. Uh, well, the model-based estimates have never been large, so, uh, it's, but it's not getting larger. It's rather getting less because the uh, more agile estimation methods, they are more ex expertise based. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, briefly talk about your purpose of you like to conduct the course. Can you give uh, some information about the course that you conducted here at the university? The idea is that I want the, want you to teach students that will be the next generation of leaders and uh, software developers and uh, project managers skills both in estimation that they know how to estimate but even more how to design a good estimation process and as basis of that how they look for evidence to select because I think that the selection the solutions they suggest should be based on evidence from experience and uh, from studies scientific studies so, 
teaching here in Nepalese University? Well, I was uh, positively surprised with the amount of industrial experience the master students had uh, in my course. Um, there are differences compared to Norwegian students when it comes to how used they are to write reports. They are less used to write reports and to collect evidence than they are in Norway. But I think they got the messages and they are, of course, fully able to collect this evidence. So my experience is that um, they are very much able to uh, follow the principles of evidence-based software cost estimation but of course that's needed training and practice and that is what they are getting these days. So do you have any suggestion for the students or the government university to better organize these type of uh, courses? Well, uh, First of all, I think that is a good idea that even undergraduate and uh, in more courses in the graduate studies, they not only have these the traditional exams where they have, have a questions and answer, instead they are stimulated at the earlier level, earlier stage to, to collect information on their own, evaluate this and write uh, reports because writing and analyzing, evaluating are skills that are very useful and I think that could, have, could be an idea to start with that earlier on, so they get more practice. Okay. Covers, so what's your future plan for uh, evidence-based uh, market? Okay. Talking to different people for the evidence-based is effort estimation data. Well, I will continue with the courses for the IT industry. We have started a master's study for industry people in Norway, where I will spread these uh, ideas. I will participate on conferences and there will also be more people that spread this uh, message. So I think that is sort of spreading out and uh, it took medicine decades to go uh, from opinion and fashion-based uh, medicine to evidence-based medicine and it will also take perhaps decades that we will manage to get a, a evidence-based uh, discipline, but I think that we eventually will get there. So do we have any plans to come back here in Nepal in the future? Definitely. Uh, the original plan is to have this lecture every second year, but now we have started also some um, application work, so it might be that it will be back earlier. And, um, we'll I will keep contact with we'll, uh, master students and other students here as well and also with some of the faculty so I will, I will be in contact with uh, Nepal because I, I like Nepal very much. Thank you very much for your time.